subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. One of the biggest problems that our environment faces and that which we know will become much more problematic in the immediate and near future is that of plastics, specifically that of microplastics. As of December 2020, microplastics have been found in every single corner of the earth and are found inside of the life that lives on earth. They're present not just in tiny marine animals which we're familiar with, but they're also found in the human body, inside of the human placenta where a fetus grows, and they've also been found inside plants, inside of fruits and vegetables. In this video, let's discuss microplastics, what they are, how they're formed, where they're found, and how they get there. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Microplastics are pieces of plastic that are less than 5 mm in diameter or length. There are two kinds of microplastics. Primary microplastics are those that are already less than 5 mm in size when they enter the environment. These are found in synthetic clothing fibers, for example, and also things like microbeads which are found in, say, exfoliating face washes, and they are found as nurdles. Nurdles are pre-production pellets of plastic, small balls of plastic, that is basically used as a raw material to make up all of the other larger plastic products around the world. These are manufactured in humongous quantities and transported and shipped across the world and are a major source of microplastic pollution. The second kind of microplastics are, of course, secondary microplastics, which are created from the weathering and degradation of larger plastic products once they enter the environment as a large product. Common examples are, of course, microplastics that are formed from the weathering of discarded plastic products we see all around us, including plastic bags, single-use straws, water bottles, fishing nets, as well as regular plastic products that we see around us which are disposed. Such larger plastic products are called macroplastics and degradation of macroplastics produce microplastics. Microplastics live in the environment for hundreds and thousands of years because of course they're non-biodegradable and they do not decompose. Microplastics have been found all around the world in every place imaginable and that's not a generalization or an exaggeration. They are found even in the most remotest parts of this world. The most common place where microplastics end up, which most of us are familiar with, is of course the oceans. This is because of the natural water cycle of Earth, which enables all trash to pretty much end up in the oceans. There are innumerable pathways through which macroplastics degrade and end up as microplastics or microplastics themselves enter the waterways and thus the ocean. They are washed down from the roads, from drainage, from sewage, from ships, including the erosion of paints and coatings on the body of the ships, from other kinds of sea vessels, from fishing nets, which are not negligible. They are in fact one of the biggest sources of floating macroplastic pollutions in the waters from industrial waste, from dumping of other kinds of waste in other water bodies and just plastic running off through the water. In the ocean, microplastics are found at all levels and all depths. We know that there is a lot of microplastic on the seafloor and we have now estimated that there is 14 million tons of microplastics already on the seafloor. Microplastics are also floating through various layers and depths in the ocean and they're also floating on the surface of the ocean along with macroplastics. We know macroplastics float in the oceans and have created islands of plastic waste such as the famous, rather infamous, Great Pacific Garbage Patch where the Pacific Ocean currents have created three islands of plastic waste. Macroplastics, of course, lead to the deaths of lots of large marine mammals such as whales and dolphins, as well as seabirds. Sometimes, just like salt particles and water molecules can enter the air from the ocean, microplastics can too. And they enter the atmosphere not just from the ocean, but also from human habitats. Microplastics are also airborne, 
and they are transported by wind to very remote areas. They're found in the dust and atmosphere all around us and we're constantly inhaling them into our bodies. We'll come to that in just a short bit. But of course, the fact that microplastics are all around us in the waters and in the air would mean that they naturally enter the bodies of all living creatures. And that's true. We hear of numerous stories of animals dying because of consumption of macroplastics, but animals are also constantly consuming and inhaling microplastics. Microplastics travel through the food chain and when small animals consume them and they travel up the chain, they also compound the toxic effects and cascadingly kill species along the way. We have found microplastics on top of Mount Everest, at the bottom of all oceans including the Mariana Trench, we found them inside of ice cores in the Arctic and the Antarctic and they are found in most of the objects we see around us as well as in water bodies and in the air around us. We find microplastics swimming throughout the ocean and we find them floating in the air. The biggest source of microplastics in the Arctic Ocean as was recently discovered in fact is wastewater from laundry where synthetic fibers like rayon and nylon that are also a part of our clothing and touch our bodies all the time end up in the ocean as microplastic pollution. Naturally, if they're everywhere all around us, they would also enter us and be found inside of us and not just humans but also all other living creatures. In December of 2020, we discovered for the first time that microplastics were found inside the womb. They were discovered in the placenta, which is an organ that develops inside the uterus and provides nourishment and oxygen to the fetus. It attaches to the wall of the uterus and is expelled along with the baby during the birth. And the baby is connected to the placenta through the umbilical cord, which passes oxygen and nutrients to the fetus. Scientists analyzing mothers and babies after normal pregnancies and normal births found that there were microplastic particles in both the maternal side of the placenta as well as the fetal side of the placenta. In fact, they could even identify that all of these microplastic particles were in fact pigmented and were of different colors. There is a story about this on the print which will be linked in the description below along with other reading material as well. But naturally, the discovery of microplastics in human placenta has caused a lot of alarm because it passes through the bloodstream. Imagine newborn babies being exposed to microplastic. But this isn't even the first time we are hearing of babies and microplastics together. We have known that bottle-fed babies are in fact injecting about 65 to 70,000 pieces of microplastic a year. But this was until a few months ago. Now studies with improved technology have shown that babies under one year who are bottle fed are in fact ingesting up to 1.6 million particles of microplastic a day. Of course, we don't fully understand the effect of microplastics in the human bodies, whether it's adult bodies or baby bodies and further studies are needed. But we know that microplastics are endocrine disruptors which means that they could affect the hormones in our bodies and thus impact normal growth and development. We know that as adults were constantly ingesting microplastics, we inhale them in the air and we also ingest them as a part of our food. Microplastics have been found in the human gut before. But we don't understand how our bodies are being affected right now and as time goes by and our tech improves, we will learn more and more about the health impact of microplastics inside human bodies. But it's not just humans and animals that microplastics have entered into. Microplastics are literally found in all forms of life and are even found in plants. Soil, of course, contains a lot of microplastics and these tend to enter the roots of plants and they travel up the plant and then end up inside of fruits and vegetables, which, of course, humans and animals consume, taking those microplastics up through the food chain again. 
The very first piece of commercial plastic was called Bakelite and was produced in 1907. Plastic manufacturing started then, just a little over a hundred years ago, but it really picked up steam in the 50s and 60s, after which it just simply exploded exponentially. It is estimated that in the last 65 years alone, the production of plastics increased by 200 times to 270 million tons in 2015, roughly weighing as much as two-thirds of the human population on Earth. Among the plastics that we produce, there are two that are the most common. The most common kind of plastic is polythene or polyethylene. Polyethylene has a lower melting point and this is used for production of a lot of common plastic that we see around us, especially single-use plastic such as bags and straws. The second most common kind of macroplastic that we produce is polypropylene, also called PP. It is much more sturdy and is found in all of the solid objects around us such as chairs or containers or electrical plugs and so on, nearly everything that we see around us. Both of these of course degrade and create microplastic. But all of these also have useful properties and benefits to humans, especially now during the pandemic when we need more PPE and masks and gloves more than ever. Unfortunately, while we are still coming to terms with the impact that microplastic has on our lives and our health and our bodies and our ecosystems, the production of plastic has continued to grow over the past few decades and is expected to grow even more in the near future.